All right, guys, y'all come with us on our journey today. It is processing day, and we're going to update how everything is after the freeze. Um, so, one of the things that I noticed and wanted to tell you about is over here. Never have I seen this happen here. This is my rosemary. My rosemary got bit by the freeze, which is odd. I have never had my rosemary bit by a freeze. So hopefully it'll put back on because I've got two that are very large rosemaries. Okay, the other thing that happened, my irises melted. I'm pretty sure they'll come back, but my irises melted. I have never seen that happen either. Um, so, when we got down to a freeze here in the south, we got down to a freeze, our plants and things are not used to that. Um, we got down to nine, but we did not come above freezing for four days. So, we are walking over to where we do our processing and everything, and we're not going to show you a lot of it. Uh, if you want to know more about it, let us know. We will put together a video and send it to you somehow where you can learn more about it but it looks like winter around here now but guys it's 70 something degrees today and we have busted hoses so we've got a lot of work to do still on hoses we keep finding new leaks um, all that good stuff so yeah Hey, Marshall. So this processing day, like I said. Uh -huh. Is it warm enough out here for you, babe? Yeah, it's hot out here for January the 2nd. I mean, it is. It's a little too hot. Let me give you this mic here. Maybe. Okay. Hey, I figured out what causes it to um, do the, um, what was it, David referred to it as the God effect. Uh -huh. You press that little button on the side, and one of these little lights change down here, and it makes me act. Did you bring me the band-aid? I did. Uh, hold on a minute. Yeah, we've already got a, a, an incident, and... Um, yeah. What I get for sharpening the knife, too sharp. Yep. So he's already processed one. While he processes, I'm going to be over in the rabbit uh, barn. What is that laying there? Uh, voided check. Oh, okay. So while he processes, I'm going to be over in the rabbit barn cleaning um, well, and finishing gonna, feeding the rabbits. You're going to show one real quick. All right, so one of the things we do when we process is we put the rabbits in the cages. We bring them over here. This is where we do our processing. Uh, we have a bucket to catch all the stuff that we're not keeping. We have a cooler full of ice. Of course, we have hoses. We have hand pruners for the legs. And we have a very sharp knife. As y'all can see, Mark has already figured out how sharp his knife is. All right, so with that, with that being said, this is your finished product. Now, we will clean this up and stuff as we put it in the freezer and all. The belly flaps, there's no meat there. Makes an awesome um, jerky though. So that's going to be on our list of things to do one day. Sister likes to help herself over here. Uh, and then that. we've got these three ready to go. But we've got a barn full that need to go. So like I said, we'll update y'all on that if you know you want to know that we will send you a little video snippet um outside of youtube so um we could also put that on youtube by the way and just make it private and send a shareable link oh okay that's something else we could do all right guys so y'all stay tuned and we'll go do more things all right we're out in the rabbit barn y'all can see we've got a nice amount of rabbit poop to clean up in a moment. This is awesome stuff for your gardens. It is gold is what I like to call it. Um, so we're coming through here picking out a few more rabbits for the processing. Um, but we're also going to go ahead and 
feed and water everybody and get that done with. We've got to come out and we've got to separate mamas from the babies. Um, these guys right here are going to new homes along with a few others that we have out here for 4-H projects. Um, they'll be leaving on the 23rd. This is our next batch of grow outs to process. These guys are Americans. I love my Americans. Um, they are a, a, a rarer breed, um, needless to say. So we, we raise the Americans, we raise the Californians and the New Zealands, and they make excellent meat rabbits. We also have, like you can see here, some Rex mix. They have excellent fur quality and colors. That is why we keep them in here for the 4-H programs and for pets. Um, because, you know, you, you want to make a little bit of income on your fee on your your farm to pay the feed bill so this is mr joker yeah <laughs> he's a cute bunny and uh we have not named him yet but this is also another one we have not named yet or is that dark chocolate no dark chocolate's down there so yeah this is another one we have not named um we've got to get some cage space these guys here will be leaving um these are boys they will be leaving so um, anybody that wastes feed anybody that's got attitudes excess boys all those leave so you want to manage your herd you've got to make sure that you um, understand what management means because if you don't let me pull you back down here again poor management means that i have six babies here that I need to do something with. That doesn't mean I give six babies new cages. It means that I give homes, whether it's freezer camp or a new home to six babies. Um, and these six babies will most likely be freezer camp. Okay, uh, you want to process at five pounds if the bunny gets over five pounds to start with that is um, an eight pound rabbit is probably going to be about four pounds that i want to process at um, usually you want to reach that by 12 weeks at the most because by then you're putting more feed into the rabbit than you are actually utilizing and the price of your processing is actually going up so you want to process as young as you possibly can to get the most amount of meat out of the bunny okay all right, we're going to go ahead and get back to feeding and watering and everything, and we will see you in a few moments. All right, part of today's video is going to be weaning babies and mamas. So this group of babies here is right at six months, six weeks old. Now we leave them in here till they're at least six weeks old um, before we take them off of mama. That way they get the best of both worlds, food and nutrition from mama. They get the pellets and they still got mama's milk. So these guys will be going to new homes on the 23rd. I like to have them off of mama two weeks before they go. Nothing leaves my barn till they're eight weeks old. So it is time to pull mama from these cages. Now we are just gonna take our couple cages down, but as you can see, all of these guys are healthy. They're all eating. And they are ready to be taken away from mama. Like I said they're six weeks old. If any of them were struggling, like I had one that was smaller than the rest of them in here, like a runt, then I would leave the one runt with the mama. But today, this litter, we don't really have a runt, so we're going to go ahead and take them all. Um, we also have been treating ear mites um, in the barn today. We found a few cases that were a little on the tough side. So... We went ahead and pulled them out also. Now, how do I properly carry a rabbit? I do scruff, but I also have this football hold going here. Okay, so I know y'all probably can't see that, but mama's head is tucked up into my elbow and, and shoulder there. Her butt is resting in my hand. It's called the football hold. Now, if I weren't filming, I would make sure that my hand was still on the scruff. The thing about scruffing is you do not want to dangle, okay? That's the main thing about this, is you don't want to dangle. The weight of the rabbit will pull the skin away from the, um, I hate to say meat, but the meat underneath. And that's, that's kind of painful for the rabbit. So 
when you do scruff, make sure you get a hand directly under the rabbit as soon as possible, uh, especially for the larger breeds. So um, we're going to go ahead and put Mama in this cage over here that we have pulled, we have emptied for her, and um, that way the babies can go ahead and start that weaning process. Now, whoops, hang on, Mama. Now the babies, I will be watching them to make sure that I don't have any issues. Pick a mama of weaning enteritis and stuff. So if any of them start not eating or showing signs that they are not healthy, then I will pull that baby and put it back with mama. Um, also, I'll pull pellets and give, give hay. Um, now, you notice there's no hay in my cages. My rabbits don't really eat it. That's why. They know they get grass. They know they get weeds. They know they get everything else. So why do they need to eat dry, dry hay, right? But we do have it, and we do try to feed it every now and then. So we're going to go ahead and wean some more of these babies that we'll be leaving. Um, got to wean that set as well because she's older. These babies are like eight weeks now, and they've been with her this whole time. But I just didn't have cage space. So I'm going to get on to that, and we'll be back. All right, so we have pulled this one out of the cooler. We have cleaned it up, pulled any leftover bits of fur and stuff on it, made sure it's all good and clean on the inside. Um, cleaned it up really, really good. What we're going to do now is we have folded it up in there. And I know it just looks delicious in that state, doesn't it? Um, so we have kind of folded it in half and we're going to put it in the crock pot and we're going to cook this on low till morning. That'll be, it's, it's, it's late right now, so I have to be at work at 6, so in the morning I will turn this off, and then we will pull the bones and stuff out, and we're going to make barbecue out of it, so. Alright, so, still talking rabbits, a um, few things we need to talk about, y'all. First of all, let me show you this sunset we've got. Is that not gorgeous? This is what the country life is all about. It's about the views. We may not get an awesome sunrise, but y'all, look at that color. Isn't that beautiful? Yep. Got to love sunsets. All right, so let me turn this back around. So, few things to talk about for rabbits. Um, we feed an alfalfa based pellet. We don't feed a really high protein um, just because I don't want to put that much money into my feed. It is a non-GMO organic feed though, um, but it's the lowest protein out there I'm sure. Um, I'm just glad my feed store carries something non-GMO and organic. Um, if they didn't, I probably would still get whatever the lowest, cheapest thing is. Um, it's nice knowing what goes into your food and everything, um, but when your food cost is outrageous, um, it really doesn't help you much. Um, so, y'all keep that in mind. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're eating GMOs every day. Um, if you're buying flour, if you're using oils, um, most all of it is going to be GMO um, unless you can afford to pay those prices. And I know as a homesteader, I cannot. So, you know, like I said, I do the best I can and what I can get is what I can get. Um, at the moment, we try to process between 12 to 20 weeks at the most. Um, so... 12 weeks is a good point, but if your rabbit hasn't grown out enough at that point, then you really can keep them, you know, four more weeks without it costing too much. 20 weeks, it starts costing you more in feed, but if you like to tan the hides and things, guess what? 20 weeks is a good point to start saving the furs. The older the bunny, the better the fur. The younger the bunny, the better the meat. So you got to pick which one you want. Um, now let's talk about breeding and stuff. It's winter time here. Um, Y'all can see my barn in the back. All of it's still open, just like it's always been. We breed through the winter. Rabbits are built 
to handle the cold better than they are to handle the heat. Um, and if you think about a litter, you know, snuggled into the hay and straw and then mama's fur on top of that, you know, it starts to get a little hot in there. Um, so we do most all of our breeding in the winter. Um, summertime, we have lost mamas. Um, hold on. Got to figure out how to hold this camera better. Uh, we have lost moms to summer heat, and that is never a good thing. So um, we always breed through the summer, I mean through the winter. We start up usually September. It's still a little hot in September, but it's fixing to cool down, you know, um, all that good stuff. But in October is when they're being born, and October is still iffy in our area, but it's usually cooler. Um, so we breed starting in September, and we go through the end of May. June, July, August, I try not to have babies in the barn. I just, it's hard on mama. So um, when you're breeding, <laughs> it's very important to bring your female to the male. Do not put that male in your female's cage. Uh, unless you like having injuries to treat. Uh, you may still have injuries to treat when you put, you know, her in his cage, but most of the time, if you put him in her territory, that's where she's going to be raising her babies. That's her space. She's going to castrate your male, and there goes your future babies. So keep that in mind. Um, never put the buck in the female's cage, ever. All right. When do we separate babies? Oh, it's best to separate by 12 weeks. So 12 weeks is three months. They can have babies at three months. We very rarely see that here. Uh, I have seen it in the middle of summer, unfortunately. Um, but we always separate between eight and 12 weeks. I leave the babies in with mama till they're six weeks. And then I pull them out for two weeks till they're eight weeks. And then if they're finding new homes, they're used to being away from mama already. And it's not an additional stress to being at a new home. So we, we wean at six weeks, find homes at eight weeks, sex them at eight to 12 weeks. And then the males and females are sorted out by then. Usually by 12 weeks, you know, hold on guys. You know who's going to be males and females, and the sex change fairy doesn't visit because you misidentified a bunny. Um, four months old is still too young to have babies, but some breeds, it's, it's okay. Uh, heavier breeds, six months is not recommended. We breed at six months. Um, but we also don't heavily breed. I don't do back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back breeding. We give our does... A break they get about a month break before getting bred again um, and a lot of people will disagree with that but exactly how many bunnies do I need in freezer camp you know um, I do not want to overwork everybody here and so yeah um, so we don't breed back to back to back we breed about once every four months because you breed on day one a month later they have babies two months later they're eight weeks old and then a month later breed again so that's how we do it you do it your way um but that's what works for us what do we feed our bunnies like i said we feed just a straight pellet a lot of people say you need to feed them hay and stuff well mine we get ear mites from the hay and there's a lot of waste a lot of waste and to us it's just not worth it now what else do we feed them well in the gardening season we throw leaves from plants in there we throw grass from the beds the weeds from the beds we throw whatever waste I think a rabbit can eat into the cages for them to eat um, they like the green stuff better than the dry stuff but you got to be careful feeding it to them um, yeah. You can really upset their systems if they're not used to eating it. Um, so do keep that in mind also. All right, guys. So that's a rundown on what we do here. We always make sure they have plenty of water. Let me turn the camera around. So any given day, you see there are four 15-gallon buckets up there. 15 gallons. So that runs one to each row of cages okay 
So 15 gallons of water usually lasts me about two or three days. Um, the one on the left over there doesn't have enough gravity, so I really, it's got another day's worth, but it gets low and it stops feeding correctly. The other three, they'll last a couple more days. They're perfectly fine. Um, so gravity fed water, that way we ensure they always have water. Um, anytime we see a rabbit not eating, the first thing I do is check the water because they have to have water to digest their feed. All right, guys. So that's the simple rundown. If you're feeding alfalfa pellets, you do not need to feed alfalfa hay. You can actually cause uh, problems in their system that way. They get too much calcium, it causes stones just like in people, only they're not able to pass the stones, so it causes them problems. Um, so we just feed a mixed grass hay. There is nothing out there that says that they are as picky as a horse and you have to feed Timothy or Bahia or orchard grass or strictly alfalfa. We go find a square bale dealer in our area and we buy it. And actually, here lately, y'all remember earlier in the year, we bush hogged and that was my hay, okay? We still got a good bit left. Um, but yeah, so that's my hay. They eat mixed grass hay with no problems here. Um, and I would suggest y'all give that a try as well. Mine really, like I said, they don't eat the hay. It ends up being more of a waste. So that guys is the consensus of what I wanted to talk to y'all about. We did processing. If anybody wants that processing video, y'all let me know. We can try to send you a video somehow or another. It's a very quick, video and it's not very clean but um we we have one that we can send you on how we do it from start to finish okay all right if y'all like what we're doing y'all make sure you give us a like leave us a comment we love comments we love to know what y'all think about what we're doing we love to know what you want to talk about next make sure you share that gets new eyes on our videos and helps us the most. All right, subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell. So we are changing up that schedule. Monday is homesteading videos. Wednesday will be our lives, sorry, 6 p.m. Wednesdays will be live uh, talking about any topic y'all want to talk about. And Fridays is Mark's fireside chat. So guys, we will see y'all later. Bye.